Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about uh, using HTTP in IoT and in home automation uh, for getting uh, data from devices and for controlling devices and why HTTP usually is not the, the best protocol to use and why MQTT actually is a, a better protocol to use in those, those uh, cases. And there is an article on the site, and I'll put a link in the in the description below. Uh, but in this video, I actually want to illustrate it and show you uh, a little demo, so this will hopefully make it much clearer. Um, now, the two reasons I, I consider HTTP not to be a good choice is, one, it's a command response protocol that has a direct connection to the device. So if you've got a thousand devices, um, then you need a thousand connections to that to those devices. So your control panel, and this is my control panel here, uh, imagine this with a thousand devices, it will need a, a, a connection, a separate connection to each one of those devices to get data from those devices and to control those devices. Uh, whereas with MQTT, it needs one connection to the broker, this control panel, and the broker connects to the devices and not the actual control panel. Uh, in addition to that, um, HTTP is a command response protocol, so to get data from the device, you need to actually send it a command. Um, so if something changes in the device, and we're going to see that in a second, uh, then you don't know about that change until you actually send the command to read the, the device data again. So the, if it was a temperature sensor, the temperature could change, and you wouldn't know until you actually read the data from that device again by sending it a command. And and the third reason that I would say is the the, the ability to group devices uh, or send uh, commands to multiple multiple devices. Uh, you can't do that easily uh, with HTTP, but you can do it very very easily with uh, MQTT. So let's look at the let's look at um, controlling uh, a device with HTTP. Now you can do it; it actually works very well. Now this is my uh, Tasmota switch. And I'm using a node red flow to do this. The flow is available. I'll make it available. It's a demo flow. I did talk about this flow in a previous video, and I'll put a link to that video in the in the description below. The only difference between this flow and the other one is that I'm actually using Dashboard 2 in this one rather than Dashboard 1. Now, you can turn the switch on and off very easily with HTTP. It works very, very well. Uh, very fast, and so the the idea that MQTT is faster than HTTP isn't true, really. Uh, HTTP is very fast. You can see that the way it responds. Uh, the problem is, is what happens if the state of that switch changes? Um, this is a switch. It could be a temperature sensor. It could be a pressure sensor. It could be any kind of sensor. What happens if it changes? Well, you won't know about the change. So I'm actually going to change the state of that switch. Uh, by sending it a command, and I'm going to turn that switch off. And the switch is actually off now. Um, you might have already clicked in the background, but I don't see that here. And I don't see it here because for to get to get the state of that switch, I need to actually send the command to read the state of the switch, and then it will send the state back. Now, in the flow, which is here, I've got a a branch here that basically pulls the switch. So if I click on this, it will send the command to read the switch uh, switch data, and I send it here. And if I go back to the, there you'll see it off. Okay, so in a real world situation, if you wanted to keep up to date of the state of the, whatever device you are actually monitoring, controlling, you would have to configure a polling mechanism where you actually read the state of that switch or that, that device at regular intervals. And again, if you've got thousands of devices, it means you've got a thousand commands going out to read the, the status of those devices. And so then you have to decide at what interval do you want to read it. Do you want to read it every minute? Do you want to read it every 10 seconds? Do you want to read it every seconds? Uh, obviously, the the more often you read it, the more traffic you're going to generate, the network traffic you're going to generate. And over a, a local area network probably doesn't make that much difference, but over a, um, a wide area network it, it will do. So so uh, just a quick summary. Um, there are th actually three main reasons for me. Um, 
I'm not sure, as I said right at the beginning of the video, uh, why I don't consider HTTP a, a particularly good choice for IoT slash home automation devices, for controlling them, for monitoring them. And top of the list is you need a separate uh, connection to each device um, with HTTP, whereas with MQDT, uh, this is from the control panel to each device. Um, whereas with uh, H with MQ sorry with MQDT you have one connection to the broker from the control panel and the broker has a connection to each one of those devices. Uh, another one you need to pull the device for status changes because of the way HTTP works. Uh, you need to send a command and get a, the date the data back from that device. And as I said previous, you need to do that at regular intervals to be regularly updated about the uh, status of that device. Whereas MQTT uses a publish and subscribe model and it publishes the state change immediately if it, as it changes. And the third one uh, is you can't really control multiple devices very easily using HTTP, whereas it's actually very easy using MQTT using by sending a command to a particular topic. So that's it. Um, so that's it. Uh, if you like the video, then please click on the like button. If you've got comments, then please leave them below. And if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel, then you need to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So until next time, goodbye.